Greetings. My name is Melvin Jones and I am the ministering evangelist of the Southwest Church of Christ located at 380 Franklin Avenue in Hartford, Connecticut. And I'd like to welcome you all to our YouTube channel. And I pray that this message will enrich your life and cause you to make a radical change for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanks again for tuning in and may God bless you. Amen again. Oh, yes. Everybody will be happy. Wouldn't it be wonderful to live in a place where everybody is happy? And we're striving to get to that place. Amen. So we're called by the gospel of Jesus Christ to work, to walk circumspectly and to live a life in accordance to his will. Amen. And then we could get to that place where everybody, hey, won't nobody have an attitude. Right. That's all right. Won't be no drama queens. Drama kings. Folk won't be confrontational. Amen. I want to live like that forever. In a place where everybody will be happy. And so let us work hard down here. So we can be rewarded like that and live up there. Uh, because uh, that's a place that we all want to be. Amen. Amen. So it's so good to see everybody today. All of our visitors and guests. So good to see my mother, sister Connie Jones back in the house. The Lord has blessed her tremendously. We talk about a walking testimony. My mother had about eight strokes, y'all. And to still walk right, talk right, cook right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's good to see everybody today. We still got to keep praying for Sister Starworth. Keep praying for Sister Mitsu Nash. Keep praying for Sister uh, J. Beta Murray and some others that are not among us. It's a kind of bug been going around for coughing, sneezing, and blues and whatnot. So, but we serve the great physician. Amen. 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 You know, one of the interesting things about life is that we find ourselves doing a lot of waiting. We wait for all kinds of things in life. We wait for summertime to get here. We wait for vacation time. We wait to get paid. We wait nine months for a newborn baby. We wait for retirement. We wait to graduate. We wait for a mate. We wait for bodies to heal. We wait for emotions to heal. We wait for a loving relationship. We wait for a change in our economy. We wait for our financial situation to change. We keep waiting for our financial situation to change. My financial situation has not changed, so I'm still waiting for my financial situation to change. Amen. And the faithful and the obedient are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, the list goes on and on regarding the things that we wait for in this life. Life is like one big waiting room. So as we tabernacle here on earth, as we deal with constant pain and frustration, turbulence, and difficulties, sometimes the waiting room just gets so rough that we sometimes say, Lord, I, I just can't wait to go home. Mm, all right. So while we wait for the Lord to take us home, there are many situations in life that can cause us to live in fear and be fearful. Mm -hmm. Terrible wars that take place, the state of this economy, they're talking about laying off all these state employees again. Mm -hmm. Job security is at risk. Life-threatening weather conditions. Let us not forget mm -hmm. our, loved, our loved ones and folk that we don't know down in Tennessee and other areas of the South mm -hmm. that are all flooded. Threatening uh, uh, life illnesses, the rising tide of sin and violence in this world. All of these things conspire to steal our joy and peace in the waiting rooms of life. So the Lord provides a soothing solution in these passages. David, he wrote a song. Want to hear about it? Here you go. <laughs> Psalm 37, it comes from the ink pen of King David. When he is an old man, in fact, when you drop down to verse number 25, he says, I was young and I was old, 
So David is mature in years when he writes these passages. And through his years, he endured hardships and difficulties and circumstances that caused his life to be in fear in his waiting room of life. However, through those adversities, David learned some lessons about God and his faithfulness and gave him peace while he was in the waiting room to leave this world. So if you want peace while you are in the waiting room, waiting to leave this world, say amen. amen. If you want peace in your waiting room of life, say amen again. Amen. So let's listen to the words of the Lord this morning because the Lord wants us to be at peace and not in pieces. Oh, I think I need to say that again. I think I need to say that again. The Lord wants us to be at peace and not in pieces. Allow me to share with you the lessons David learned in his life. These lessons will teach us uh, some things about the struggles that the righteous face as the prosperity of wicked increases. And it also point out why the righteous has, how we have a distinct advantage over those who do not know the Lord. So, these valuable lessons come together to form a lesson that we'll simply call peace in the waiting room of life. Peace in the waiting room of life. Let's go to verse 1 of Psalm 37. And I just got to say the brothers are doing a remarkable job leading us in the service. Amen? Amen. Reading the scriptures, serve us, communion. We got some prayer warriors. Amen. Just singing, so amen. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. It may seem that the wicked man just keep on prospering in life, enjoying the fullest of life, while the righteous man suffers. This causes the righteous man to sometimes fret. The word fret in this text, it means to be hot. It means to be furious. It means to be angry. It means to be kindled. Sometimes this anger is focused against the wicked man and his apparent advantages in life. And sometimes this anger is even focused at God. If we are not careful, we, are, we will find ourselves envious of the workers of iniquity. When we see the rich and the famous living the luxurious life, traveling all the time, and dinner parties, and yachts, and things of that nature, sometimes we say, man, they got it made. All that money, and they just live in large, a life of ease. But here I am, trying to live my life right, and I'm suffering, and I'm being persecuted for the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen. Trying to live right, but everything just seems to keep going wrong. Amen. You ever encountered that before? Amen. When we see crooked politicians living it up, to do whatever they can do, to get away with things that you and I will go to jail for, the hunger for power and the overwhelming appetite for money continually oppress us. So sometimes we say, wow, they get away with everything. Their children get the best education. I voted for this person thinking he would make policies that will benefit all mankind. And, but he just used my vote to get in office for selfish reasons. Mm -hmm. And now life is a little bit harder now because of the decisions made by this greedy individual in office. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we fret and get angry. For those that are outside of Christ's will, that are prospering. So that's why I dropped by to tell you this morning that we need to tell somebody that when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Y'all catch that? When the power of love overcomes the love of power, then we can have peace. Yes. There will be more peace in this world. But the kind of world that we live in, we can't look for them to follow that quote. Right. 
That's why we have Jesus to give us the peace we need in the waiting rooms of life. Listen, on our job, sometimes we fret and get envious at others who climb the social ladder. Not because they're smarter than us, not because they know the job better than us, not because they're more educated than us, not because they do the job better. And sometimes we fret over these things and get envious and say, how come I can't have this position? I'm more qualified. Mm. We get angry. Mm. And we fret. I'm a child of God. And this person don't even know. In fact, he don't even believe in you, Father. Mm. He's kind of the latter. But the text tells us to fret not. Right. When the wicked are prospering. Mm. Psalm says, don't worry. Remember, you are in the waiting room of life. Your reward is coming. And according to this text, the disobedient, the disobedient, they're going to get something too. Notice the language in verse 2 of this text. The Bible says, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. The Bible says they'll be cut down. Listen, usually when something gets too high, it's got to come down. Babylonia, the first world power, Got too big. It was soon brought down to her knees. Persia, the Medo-Persian Empire, the second world power, got too high and had to be brought down low. Greece, the next strongest world empire, got too high and had to be brought down to her knees. Rome was the next world empire, got too high and was brought down to her knees. The Tower of Babel got too high. And the Lord had to bring that thing down to its knees. Stall of Tarsus was on his high horse. Going to Damascus, God had to break him down, knock him off his high horse. Many athletes, movie stars, musicians, bathed in wealth, and now some of them are swimming in poverty. When my head grows too high, Brother Coley, that's a problem. Amen. Gotta get it good, then you just cut it off. Grass gets too high, gotta cut it down. The Bible says when, the, when the, the wicked is living high on the hog, it will be cut down like grass, like a green herb. Turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 23 real quick. Matthew chapter 23. Don't ever allow yourself to think you are high and mighty in any aspect of your life. Sometimes our abilities can become a liability. Am I right about it? We've all been gifted. We're all good at something. But have some humility with your gift. Watch Jesus in Matthew chapter 23 and verse number 12. Brother Pharaoh, what does the Bible say? In Matthew chapter number 23 and verse number 12. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever thinks he is all that in a bag of chips. Oh, wait a minute. Don't say that one more. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at sports, I'm good at math, I'm good at reading, I'm good at architecture, I'm good at building things, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. I can sing, I can pray, I can do this, I can whoever thinks they are high, what'll happen? And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Alright, so whosoever shall exalt himself, God is gonna break him down, he's gonna be humble. Don't ever think you're too high. And he who humbles himself, God will exalt him. I'm so glad that God will break people down and it ain't me. I'm so glad that all I got to do is just pray for those folk that, that got the job and I didn't. I just got to pray for those politicians. I heard the prayer this morning. Pray for our leaders. That they will make decisions beneficial for all mankind. That's all we can do is pray. God will do the breaking down. So, so he would break them down when they try to build themselves up. So David says, don't get caught up in the prosperity of the wicked. Don't fret because of the upward mobility of sinners. Do not be envious of those that work iniquity. I have too much going on in my own waiting room of life to be caught up in concern about what's going on in the waiting room of the prosperous. Got enough going on. In my little circle of life. So King David says, this is what I did. And I'm leaving you with this song so that you can do the same thing. Watch verse 3. David said, this is what I did. This is what I want you to do. 
Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. That's all. Simple formula. Trust in the Lord and do good, so thou shalt dwell in the land, and thou shalt be fed. There are endless benefits in trusting in God. I mean complete and absolute trust in God. Trust means to rely on the integrity and the strength and the surety of a person or a thing. To have confidence and hope and expectation of something or someone. When you trust in somebody, you believe in them. Listen, me and Sister in Christ was talking about trust just yesterday. Church, it's hard to trust people today, isn't it? We've all been burnt by somebody. And as a result of being burnt, we put up a defensive wall around our hearts. We put up a force field around our heart, and we don't want to let nobody in. So now, I'm a child of God, though. And, and, and God didn't call me to live on an island. God didn't call me to live in isolation. So God calls me to have relationships, make disciples of all nations. That means I have to let somebody in. So the only thing that I can think of that can help us out in this area, and I say this constantly in many of my sermons, is when Jesus was going to Jerusalem, he says, fellas, when I get there, they're going to kill me. Peter said, the Lord, then just don't go. Jesus looked at Peter and said, get behind me, say it. So what does all that mean with this preacher? That's a good question. Glad you asked. It means that when somebody breaks our hearts, say something to us we don't like, don't take it personal. Know that that's the devil working through that individual to get to you. Therefore, if you follow that principle, you can have a more forgiving heart. You can have peace in your waiting room. But if you take it personal, there is no peace. That person walking around doing whatever they want to do, and here you are frustrated with no peace because somebody stole your peace? Like I said, I ain't got time to be concerned with what folk are doing to me. And to, Listen, I'm going to just pray for them. Lord, give me the strength, the ability to forgive this person from my heart. Not just words. From my heart so I can have peace in my waiting room of life. Amen. Yes, it's hard to trust people. We still, yes, we must have wisdom. Some folk, we just got to love from a distance. I'm going to just keep it real. <laughs> even, even family, man, it's just some family, member. You just got to love them from a distance. But ask God for wisdom. So, I was talking to a, a fellow at work, and he was going through some difficulties with people. He said, man, man, I don't know who I can trust. I said, I do. Trust in the law. He just looked at me. Wow. Like I said, something like that was great. Well, it was great, because it's in the Bible. <laughs> like, wow, man, I didn't have to think about that. So the Bible says, trust in the Lord. Trust in God. His integrity, his truth. Trust that God has the ability to give you what you need. Trust that God has the strength to set you free. Trust in God and have confidence in his power. Trust in God and expect God to work wonders in your life. Amen. Trust him and expect him to work out the impossible. Church, I'm here to tell you, he is able. Amen. He is able to do the impossible. He can validate you even when you're in the valley. Amen. He can promote you even when you're under pressure. Amen. He can exhaust you even when you're exhausted. Amen. He can rise you up even when you're feeling roughed up. Amen. He can deliver you even when you're feeling depleted. He will give you the victory even when you're feeling vanquished. He will give you understanding even when you've been undermined. He can overcome even when you feel overwhelmed. He is able, he is able to give you peace in the waiting room of life. He is able this morning to do all things pertaining to life and godliness. But notice the B clause of the text, specifically in the New King James Version. He says, as they dwell in the land, and verily they shall be fed. The, end, the, the New King James Version says, feed on his faithfulness. The word fed probably means to feed like a flock. Like you just grazing. Think about horses and cows and sheep. 
Listen, when they not mating, when they not sleeping, and when they ain't going to the bathroom, they just eat. Amen. All they doing is grazing. The Bible is telling us that we should be grazing on the faithfulness of God. We should be spending the majority of our time feeding on the faithfulness of God. Now, if we can feed on the faithfulness of God, the same way we can feed on fried chicken. Come on, somebody. I've seen how some of us eat. We can graze. <sighs> we get our eat on. Think about if we fed on God's faithfulness the way we feed on our favorite food. Oh, Lord. There is an overabundance of never-ending supply of God's faithfulness. So we dwell in this land, feed on His faithfulness in spite of our troubles, and we can have peace in the waiting rooms of life. But the reason why many people lack peace in their waiting room is because there's not enough grazing going on. Let's eat, y'all, on the word of God. Okay, verse 4 of the text. The Bible says, delight thyself also in the Lord. Trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. To delight ourselves, it means to live a delicate and tender life. It's an interesting meaning when you pull back the layers. To live a pampered life. And when you delight yourself, the Bible says, God will give you the desires of your life. Amen. What you really desire, God will grant it. Think about that for a minute. When you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you what you desire. Now, before we get too excited about this text, and start asking God for all kind of stuff. Who would the preacher say, God, can give me anything I want. All I got to do is delight in his word. Oh, man. Now, before you start to log you list of requests, there is something that we need to be mindful of. Let us pay very close attention to the contextual structure of this text. All right? When you trust in the Lord and do good, and feed on his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. All right, now, now fasten your seatbelts right here. This is your captain speaking. It's about to get turbulent. Mm -hmm. The contextual structure says when you trust in the Lord, when you do good, when you feed on his faithfulness, that will regulate your desires. Right. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Man, preacher, you just put my ball. I wanted to ask God for some stuff. Now you're telling me my desires are going to be regulated? Yes. When you delight yourself in the Lord, you will be disposed to ask only those things which will be proper for him to grant. Oh, preacher, you done said something. God has not promised to gratify all of the appetites of the body and of the flesh. But to grant all the desires of the heart all the cravings of a renewed, sanctified soul. That's what he will grant. The desires of a renewed, sanctified soul. He will grant all your desires. Oh, now we're walking into some real maturity here now. That's some deep-seated stuff right there. What is the desire of the heart of a good man, preacher? To love the Lord. To live for the Lord. To lift up the Lord. To listen to the Lord. To lean on the Lord. To look up to the Lord. When we live a dedicated and tender life, the main desire of our hearts will be to please God. You won't be asking for all that stuff. I'm in the waiting room of life and I'm waiting to get paid. I'm waiting to, I'm about, for my body to heal. I'm waiting for a relationship. I'm waiting, Lord. And, and but meanwhile, I need to lean on the Lord and trust Him yes. to know He's going to come through. Amen. So I don't have to ask for all this other stuff. Amen. Just ask for the things that you that are proper for Him to grant. Yeah. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 73 real quick. 
Instead of delighting in the things that please the flesh, the righteous man is called upon to find ultimate source of joy in the Lord. That's where we find our ultimate source of joy. Now, look at Psalm 23, I'm sorry, 73, and drop down to verse number 25. What does the Bible say? Whom have I in heaven but you? Hold on a second. The desires of my heart. Lord, out of all the heavenly hosts in this big old place called heaven that lies for square. Out of everybody that's up there, Lord, all I have is you. Read. And earth has nothing I desire besides you. There is nothing on this earth that I desire. A new car, a new house, a, a, a mate, a new clothes, a, a education from Yale, a trip around the world. Nothing in this world, nothing on earth I desire but you, Lord. That's what a righteous man desires. Who in heaven do I have but you? What on earth else do I want or need? My desire is you, Father. Just you. Because it's only you that can give me the peace I need in my waiting room of life. When you trust in the Lord, when you do good and feed on his faithfulness, that will regulate your desire. Amen. Southwest, the greatest desire of our heart should be to please God. Amen. Things will not give you peace in the waiting room of life. A new house can't heal a broken heart. A new car won't help me get over being betrayed by a loved one. A new man or a new woman won't help my high blood pressure, my diabetes and cancer, leukemia and, and arthritis and migraines and dementia and AIDS and ulcers and, and backaches. A fat bank account won't help ease the pain of bereaved men. A new job can't advise me on how to raise my family. Moving to a better uh, community will not cure the anxiety uh, of all my problems and drug problems and alcohol problems and gambling problems. It won't help me with lying problems and cussing problems and, and stealing problems and cheating problems and selfish problems and me, myself, and I problems. Amen. Amen. If I want peace in the waiting room of my life, my purpose must be to please God. My attitude has to be aligned with God. My eyes are upon God. My spirit is saturated in God. My mind is marinated in God. My desire is to be dedicated to divinity. While I wait for the sound of the trumpet, the last trump, and the sky just cracks open and gives way. Well, I'll wait for that moment for all the angelic hosts to come descending down to earth with the Lamb of God standing there in the middle of the air. I want to make sure that my house is in order when that day comes. So while I'm waiting for that glorious day, I might as well live in peace because that day is coming. So while I wait, for the Lord. I'm going to wait peacefully. And another key component that is aligned with peace is being still. Sometimes church, we're like a schizophrenic squirrel trying to cross the street. Don't know. <laughs> and we're trying to deal with life and we just all oh, scattered for all over the place. Stand still and know that he is God. Nations of Israel in the desert, Pharaoh's army behind him, the Red Sea in front of him. Moses says, Stand still. The winds is blowing, it's thundering and lightning, the waves is crashing. Jesus stood up and said, Peace. Be still. Peace and being still goes together. Listen, peace. Listen, listen to this, y'all. I think this is kind of profound. Peace does not always mean that you will be in a place where there is no noise, no trouble, no hard work, no crowds, 
and no drama. But it means to be in the midst of those things and still have a calm, peaceful spirit. That's peace. To be in the midst of all of that and to be able to be still and be calm. So let us be mindful of our desires in our waiting room of the Lord. Let us recognize and realize that we will never be satisfied with things. Never. Think about it. Think about the things we desire. My house ain't big enough. I need another. We ain't satisfied. I mean, it's all right to have more different things, but I want us to think about our desires. We ain't never satisfied. Clothes out of style. Okay, you've been wearing a size 10 for two decades. Yeah, I said 10. I was trying to be encouraging. <laughs> two decades. And I want to still get something new. I, I, I got to get another pair of sneakers. I need another pair of shoes. Oh, Lord, help me with this shoe bag. Stop, Sister Jones. I see you. <laughs> Never satisfied. My computer ain't fast enough. All my cell phone does is send and receive messages. <laughs> Wasn't that the original intent? Oh, but now, no, no, no. Gotta have apps. Gotta have Google. Gotta have navigation. Gotta have internet. Gotta have my face, your face, Instagram, everybody's gram, all this stuff. Gotta have it. We ain't satisfied. iPads, iPods, iPhones, iPad 1, 2, and 3. It's up to what? 10, 11, 12 maybe? They come out with another one every year. I gotta stay updated. We ain't satisfied. Flat screens. Oh my goodness, now they got this curved screen. That thing is beautiful. Watch your desires, brother. You know, the Super Bowl look well on that thing. Man, you see that TV? <laughs> we ain't satisfied. 42 inches, 55 inches, 65. This 80 inch TV too small. <laughs> Gotta put the thing in the backyard. Big old hundred screen in. DVD, no, no, no. Blu-ray, yes, yes, yes. What next? We ain't satisfied. Church, things will never satisfy the heart. Things will never give you peace in the waiting room. Just trying to help us get our perspective in order, that's all. Just want us to see things from a spiritual perspective. So the righteous man finds his source of pleasure in the Lord. Listen, the Lord never changes. So we want to change stuff. God, now Hebrews 13 and 8, he never changes. But he absolutely finds satisfaction in the Lord. All right, so let's come to a landing. Verse 5. I can see the wrong way, but it's a long way off. No, I ain't gonna mess with y'all. Y'all missed out an hour of sleep. So did I. I ain't gonna lie. I was late this morning. Be the first to come. I missed that hour. So uh, we're gonna try to get you out of here so I can get some rest. All right. So where we at? Verse five. Oh, this is good. Commit thy way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. We are told to commit. This has an interesting meaning in the Hebrew literature. It means to roll onto. It means to roll over. And I'm, I'm still trying to look at. I'm like, ah. I had a difficult time with this, but I, I, I think I got you, Mr. Somers. The meaning, it makes a lot of sense when I look at the whole context. The idea is that instead of worrying and fretting, the righteous man should learn to roll his burdens over unto the Lord and trust him to take care of the matters in his way and in his time. Commit your way. The term uh, way, it means uh, properly the way that you act, the way you live your life. The path, the course of life, the manner in which one lives. The reference here is the whole course of life or all that, that have aspects pertaining to life. Our plans, our conduct, all these issues or results of those plans. Everything, everything in regard to the manner in which we live and all its results are committed to the Lord. Roll everything over to the Lord. Proverbs 13 and 3, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. If you want peace in the waiting room of life, you got to roll some stuff out of your life. Am I right about it? Some of our waiting rooms are so unpeaceful because we ain't rolling some stuff out. We got to roll some stuff out of there. See, when you see something in your room that is disruptive, roll it off. When you see something in our waiting room that is disturbing the peace, roll that thing off. When the Lord looks into our waiting room, 
He says, my child, you got some rolling off to do. Commit your way to the Lord and he'll bring it to pass. Yes, that's his plan is to bring it to pass. He's going to take care of it in his own time. Verse 6 and 7 of our text. It says that he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. See that? For him. Fret not. There it goes again. Thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. I like it when he says rest. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you what? Rest. Jesus says come unto me all. Jesus is not prejudiced. Jesus is not partial. Jesus is not picky. Jesus shows no favoritism. Jesus shows no nepotism. He says, all oh, ye that labor, that are fatigued from hard work and toil. He says, listen, I know you've been taking care of those kids and them grandkids. I know you've been working hard and taking classes and trying to improve yourself. I know you've been to the PTA meetings and the board meetings and the community meetings and taking the kids to sporting events and, and play rehearsal and music rehearsal. I know you've been engaged in housework and homework and yard work and church work and, and all kind of work. I know you've been bogged down with high taxes and high prices but a low salary. So Jesus said, just lay your weary head on my shoulders and I will give you rest. Nobody can give you rest like Jesus can give you rest. Nobody. Now, how do you do all that stuff all the time? The grace of God. Jesus just gives me this calm serenity and it's just peaceful a way to look at things in the midst of a, a, a busy schedule. And he just gives you in your waiting room of life. See, your boss might give you a lunch break. You may have to take, you may have the weekends off and sometimes you may uh, have a house to yourself if you live with other folk and these types of rests are temporary but you got to hit the grind sooner or later. Amen? You ever go on vacation it's like, oh man, I got to go back to work. You got to hit the grind all over again. So the text suggests that instead of allowing the antics and the sins of the wicked to cause me to become angry and burned with fear and worry, we are told to just rest. Yes. And don't worry about it. And trust in the Lord and do good. And delight ourselves and roll stuff off. Yes. Then we can rest in the Lord. So church, that is the prescription of the waiting room of life. One thing about medicine, it takes a while before it can set in. I remember when Kadesi was little and she wasn't feeling good and I gave her some medicine. And five minutes later, she said, Dad, I don't feel a little better. And five minutes later, I said, you got to wait and let the medicine work. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the word of God in your waiting room. When that word of God is in you, you got to wait and let it saturate. Mm -hmm. Maturity takes time. And you got to wait and let that medicine get. It's amazing how uh, uh, muscle relaxers and things like etc. I still don't know uh, scientifically how you can just take this aspirin and it just finds where the pain is throughout the body. And it just travels and it says, okay, it's some pain in the knees and the ankle bone and you got a headache and that thing just... It's the same thing with the Word of God when it goes in. It goes in and then it just goes all over. And the Word of God just permeates throughout your body. And it takes time to soak in. You got to let the word of God marinate in your mind. You got to let the word of God permeate through your soul and through your spirit. So, with all that said, let us be careful about allowing ourselves to be worked up in a rage over what the world is doing. We can find ourselves all worked up because of what the world is doing. We are to be patiently waiting for the Lord to work out his plan in our lives. We don't know what that is, but we patiently waited. Listen, I had no idea that the Lord was going to have me in a pulpit preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have no idea five years from now, ten, I don't know. Just wait for the wonderful blessings of God because you don't know where. He could have you as a missionary in another country somewhere. He could have you doing some great things here in the United States of America. Just wait and let him work out his plan in your life. God's blessings is so abundant, so abundant, that you ain't even got a big enough storage room to put everything God has to give you. 
You ain't got enough room in your barns for his stuff. But it would be wise for us to remember this in closing. Two things will, divide, will define us in the end. I strongly believe that it would be wise for us to take heed to this. Two things that will define us. Your patience when you have nothing and your attitude when you have everything. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Your patience when you are down to nothing. God is watching you in the valley. He's watching you in your way. Lord. But now once he bless you and how you have abundance, what's your attitude when you got everything? We've seen folk coming here with nothing. No job, no nothing. Coming to the church and God bless them with a job, bless them with this and that. Then we don't see them no more. Yes, you patiently waited for God to bless you. You come to church. Now, he, he, oh, you got a car, you got somewhere to live. Got a little something now. What is your attitude now that you have some things? Those two things will define us. Your patience when you have nothing and your attitude when you have everything. So take the medicine that the chief physician has prescribed and you can live in peace in the waiting room of life. So if you're here this morning and you want some real peace, it's, it, it's conditional. There's some things that Jesus called for you to do. And that's simply to obey the gospel. And how do I obey the gospel? Well, you hear the word. You believe the word. You repent of your sins. You confess Christ. And you get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. That simple. Now you can have peace. Because you can't have peace without Jesus. You got to be in Christ's body. You got to be in the body of Christ. For you to receive the spiritual blessings that come through Christ. Yes. Now, if you're a member of the Church of Christ and your waiting room and haven't been so peaceful, just ask for prayer. You don't need a long with the story, just ask for prayer and watch God. Pray for patience while you're in your waiting room. Mm -hmm. Like I said, church, this life is filled with stuff we got to wait for. That's right. But just wait on the Lord. That's what He tells us to do. Today. Out of all the things in Scripture, there's like tons of wait and patient scriptures in the Bible. Mm -hmm. God. And to us, God works slow. That's the way he works. So, so that's how I kind of had that kind of mindset. All right, a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. Amen. And so I got to be patient and wait on the Lord. So if you're a member of the church and you just, your waiting room is a, a mess, just ask for prayer. And then God will bless you tremendously. Wait patiently in the waiting room of life. Let us all stand and let us have a closing song. What can... I want to thank you again for tuning in to the Southwest Church of Christ YouTube channel. I pray that this message has caused you to make some changes in your lives. If you have any questions regarding the message, feel free to give us a call at any time or feel free to send us an email and we'll be glad to give you a Bible answer to your Bible question. Thanks again for tuning in and may the Lord bless you in a very special way.